which happens when you don't test full hand, unfortunately. Um, hi, I'm Hamish Coleman. I'm here to talk to you about a thing that nobody's actually heard of called PCP. Um, and how to make it actually monitor your SNMP devices, which is dear to my heart because I like monitoring a lot of things. Um, how do you frame advance? Yeah, that, oh, there we go. Hopefully we actually have some familiarity with SNMP in this audience, but I'll go over some high points to start with. It's like, it's called the simple networking monitoring protocol or management protocol, but mm, a lot of people don't actually consider it to be that simple. So it's for monitoring your routers and switches and anything else you can think of, but that's where I'm looking at today. Um, and what SNMP normally uses is a text string that has got dots in it that's open-ended. You can have as many as you want to make it as deep as you want to have it expandable. And that gets translated through to an OID that is used for internally in the device as just a series of dotted numbers. Um, you can see two examples up there of that. There. There's this big, horrible, long number and its friendly name, which is a little bit more friendly than um, its real name, which I'm not going to read out because I don't have my notes. Um, but there is actually an official name that's just as many dots as there is in the um, dotted number that is the official name, text name for that. Um, and SNMP is primarily the standard in the industry. But some people didn't like SNMP. SNMP was built for small devices originally by network vendors in, to embed in their very constrained hardware. But some people had much bigger hardware and it was a different problem area at the time when they actually decided to come up with this. They had a much different problem. So um, Performance Copilot, or PCP, was started about 15 years ago by SGI in Melbourne and is now an open source project, but its original idea was much bigger systems and they were trying to work out ways of having very complicated systems be able to monitor the actual high performance environment and come up with solutions for these big problems. Um, and performance Copilot is a, an open source toolkit for system level performance analysis. So the, because it's a toolkit, it's actually a collection of utilities and scripts and little <coughs> demons that do things for you. So the idea is you can plug it together in different ways to achieve the, your own personal requirements. Um, it's intended to be extensible, so if you've got an application you want to monitor, the expectation is that you can write your own PCP agent to plug into the PCP framework and do that. Um, it's one common set of stuff for both live monitoring and historical monitoring, so it provides some of its tools provide the ability to create archives of this data, and then you can actually look at that data yourself. Um, the architecture of PCP looks something like this where you've got a whole bunch of various agents that are talking to a collection daemon all on the one box. And this is where you can extend it with your own agents and there's lots of agents that you can already enable and install by default. Then you've got a bunch of clients that can all talk optionally via proxy over the network to the daemon and get their data and do various things with it. Um, there's a whole bunch of actual tools that come with it. This is just a highlight. and. Uh, picture of what some of them can look like, but what it actually provides you with the ability to do is real-time conditional alerting based on a little language that they've got that will query from the metrics that you provide it and can generate alerts, provide you with the ability to have your logs from last week and compare them to what's happening today and go, well, I've got the real-time query here showing me a specific metric, and I've got the archive query here showing me exactly the same metric from last week or last month based on my logs, and you can query the same data with the same set of tools, which is quite convenient when you actually want to do that kind of, um, I don't know what's quite wrong, I'm going to compare it and find out, uh, which is helped along by a little tool in it, which is uh, called PMWTF, which allows you to just say, well, hang on, What's different between these two? And we'll do a bit of summary for that. So there's a bunch of little tools to help you with that kind of thing. 
Um, and as you saw in the previous chart, there was a, a charting tool, um, which actually I will go back to because my demo won't work because I'm not on my laptop. There's a, um, there's a charting tool um, that you can run up and bring up the various charts. And this can chart multiple different metrics on the same chart, multiple different hosts in different windows or even on the same chart if they're comparable. And you can bring in side by side an archive at the same time. So you can do that both with text mode tools and the GUI tools. Um, so compared to SNMP, there are a lot of similarities, but on the whole there is actually a very small number of differences. Philosophically, they have built SNMP to be extendable to the extent of anything can be extended, whereas PCP is a little more limited. You can have a fixed number of actual things you're monitoring. You can't actually extend it too far. Um, and as the comparison to SNMP, we've still got a dotted namespace where you can have as many text names as you want, as deep as you want. But that translates to one small number. It's all represented by a 32-bit number, uh, of which about 22 bits are available for your metrics on this host in your agent. So if you're writing your own agent, you've got about four million metrics you can monitor, which is still plenty, but it's a lot less than having a completely open-ended space like SNMP. So it's a bit of an impedance mismatch when you're trying to compare the two of them. Now the other comparison is that um, the PCP agents have all the metadata as well as the data. So with SNMP, you load a MIB file, a management information base file, which provides the metadata, any help text, any translation between numbers that you don't make sense of and what that actually mode is in a text string and how you'd use it. That's all in the MIB file, which sometimes you have to go and find. With PCP, that's all in the agent. So the agent provides all the metadata, all any help text that's written, and all the, um, all the metrics of whether it's a per, per second or a kilobits or what kind of data you're actually monitoring. So it's a little bit more effort to build that into the agent, but on the other hand, it means there's less effort trying to find things. Um, so why did I actually want a bridge to SNMP? Well, we have a lot of metrics that we're collecting using PCP at work. We go through huge numbers of metrics that we log on archives and keep for, I don't think we've got archives going back to 2006. But that's great until you actually need to monitor something that you cannot install a PCP agent on. So we've got a very small amount of information for our non-PCP devices. All our monitoring, uh, all, our, all our alerting is generally generated via um, PCP alerts. All of our long-term trending and performance analysis for what we need to actually resize and scope for the next version of stuff comes from our PCP archives. So because we don't have that flexibility to monitor anything that's not PCP, we don't have a clear idea of what's going on with that. So I figured the best way of looking at this is to actually have a PCP bridge. Combined with the fact that it seems that the rest of the world use SNMP, and we're in a very small minority with our PCP stuff. Um, finally, I couldn't actually find any general purpose PCP gateways. There are one or two examples in the PCP environment of specific metrics that somebody once wanted to monitor, this one thing, and the only way they could get that data was through SNMP, and they ended up querying that via SNMP and then exporting it for PCP, but it wasn't generic. You couldn't expand on it, you couldn't add your own SNMP mappings. It was just that one thing. So what I actually wanted to achieve was to be able to simply load a list of devices and their, PC, their SNMP credentials and then determine enough metadata to provide information to PCP so that it's a, actually a valid PCP metric. So that 
means I have to invent or load the, um, the metadata that SNMP doesn't have, and then end up with the ability to have a side-by-side -side comparison of both SNMP and PCP data, so that if we've got some kind of alert or um, incident that we're monitoring, or even the trending of our, um, our performance, I can show the application statistics compared to the switch statistics and have them all in the same comparable space. And the final thing I wanted to actually provide is a dynamic interface so I could browse through and get into the um, various OIDs that are offered by the SNMP devices on an ad hoc basis, so not something specifically that I knew I needed in advance to monitor, but something that I was like, oh, I wonder what this variable is doing. Let me try with my standard tool set, with my standard graphing environment, to drill down into that device custom OID and get it to show it to me. And then if it looks like it's interesting or reporting something useful for me at this point, I can then decide whether or not to statically add that to my normal set of things that I log. But I don't have to reconfigure it to get to that point. So that was an important one for me, but unfortunately it wasn't something that I was able to achieve. Now I won't do the demo because I can't, so I'll just jump through here to the not demo. Um, so I'll bring up a, uh, a PCP chart program. Um, and uh, I've added a, um, added a new chart. And what it actually shows you is a list of various metrics that you can have in a tree format. So each one of these top level names shows you uh, kind of the scope of the things that you can monitor. Um, if you're building your own agent, you'd end up with another top level name like that gener generally. But not all of these are representative of a specific separate agent. Um, and then you slowly drill down into your um, tree to find the, the actual OID that you want to monitor. Um, I've only configured this example with, well, actually, I've configured this example with two hosts. Um, and if you have more hosts, they, um, they show up here with my gateway. And you just keep drilling down. Um, and you can see already that there's a bit of a problem there. <laughs> um, if you drill down far enough, you eventually find the metric that you want to monitor. Um, but this is the full SNMP OID, which makes it a, bit, a little bit unwieldy. And then when you monitor it, you end up with, as expected, a graph, which is a little bit less interesting than it could have been, because it's not moving, which I was what I was going to show you. Um, so some other things that you can do is you can actually, on the command line, do various queries for it and say, OK, is a similar, similarly deep void. And what I'm getting back is for that one PCP metric that I'm asking for, it's returned me an instance domain set of values, uh, which is a rather laborious way of saying it's returned me a column. And you can see here what I've got is the list of names for my interfaces, which I've used that, that one there in the, um, in the not demo that you didn't see. Uh, to select which one of the um, devices I wanted to actually show. And this is all driven by a very simple config file. This is a complete config file at the moment. Um, the one I've got running is a little bit larger than that, but this would work. And you have to actually specify the SNMP type data type in order for my bridge to calculate the appropriate data for the PCP client to make it a valid PCP metric. And then there's a hint to, so you can if you run the right query, you can actually get some hint of what the hell that number is based on this text string. Um, so there's a bunch of things that remain to do, primarily that dynamic mapping that I was talking about, which was kind of limited by the fact that the Perl libraries that I was using to interface with, SNM, with um, the PCP didn't expose that functionality. So I need to go back, fix the Perl libraries first, and that in turn would then allow me to implement the dynamic mappings. So. There's a bunch of other things that I'd like to be able to do with this. And um, in fact, unfortunately, I was hoping to be able to say that it's available from the, um, the Performance Copilot homepage, but uh, it's not. So if you want to have a look, uh, I've got a little uh, project tracker up that has a, a reference to my Git repository with my changes in it. Um, I'm in discussion with the, uh, one of the maintainers to get it folded into the PCP repository, which hopefully will happen shortly. Um, Thank you for your time. I had hoped to be able to tell you how this worked in production.
about uh, three months ago I thought I was going to have this in production um, and therefore have some experiences to share with you. Uh, unfortunately our priorities changed and um, we still don't have it in production yet. I still hope to have it in production soon, but soon always seems to be tomorrow. Um, <laughs> any questions? Right. Sorry? What are the troubles you've had uh, getting this up script? Uh, primarily time on my part. Um, and in the case of the maintainer I'm working with, I think he's a little bit constrained for time as well. So getting my actual changes reviewed um, was the longest time part of it. Um, I've, I've been, I'm chatting to him. He actually sits a couple of desks away from me at work. So... I say, are you happy with this? And he says, I like the idea. So there's no actual conceptual problem with what I'm doing. It's just, you know, um, I haven't actually had my changes vetted by anyone. It's just me. And they are hacky in some areas. So, so when you broke it enough time, you think no problems release? Yes, yes. I, in fact, submitted to him last week a um, final version of this patch set that I think addresses all the um, concerns he had last time we talked. Um, so... I actually told him, don't, don't try and bust your gut rushing this through for this week because I thought it was more important to be um, both on his good side and um, have a real valid review before I got it pushed in. Um, but yeah, hopefully it'll be quite soon that it comes into the part of the, um, the main package. And then I think they do quarterly releases and once it gets released, that uh, will end up being a package for Debian and Fedora, and I think even Red Hat Linux has got um, a fairly recent version of it packaged um, because they use it for some of their internal... Um, uh, some of their internal people are interested in using this. I don't know whether they use it internally, so... Great. All right. I don't think that's any more questions, is there? No? Thank you very much.